So uh, I understand Senator Johnson's on her way. She was, she's in grand jury, but she's in the Woodburn area, so I'm not going to hold you here. So clearly, uh, here we are again. Um, you know, I, do you notice how we don't do the presentation of the colors? We don't do the invocation. Because our rules require a quorum has to be here for even that. Now stop and think about that. They, the flags are ready, and there they are. We don't even get to salute the flag. So I'm telling you that the House does. The House changed the quorum rule to after the presentation of colors, they then would go to the quorum. So I'm thinking about that because I think, I'm just telling you, that's not American to me. Not trying, your patriotism, your patriotism. So I just want everybody to understand that <laughs> the we're not presenting the colors and we're not even doing an invocation, whatever your religion, we can do poems, whatever, because we don't have on the floor the Republicans, save one. Today, Tuesday, March 3rd, Senate Bill 1530 has been added to the second reading list. That is the climate carbon bill, which apparently, I'm told, is the reason they're not here. 43 other bills await second reading. I've already talked to you about some of them. There's a foster care bill there. There's a um, Healthy Kids and Farm Worker Act, and the, the Indian Child Welfare Act, which I know is being carefully watched by the, the tribes, the Native Americans, those who have nine flags outside this capital on that way, like no other state has done. The first flags are the Native Americans, and then we have the flag of every other state. There's eight measures that could have been acted on today. Eight measures we could have acted on today. Cost of insulin. I don't have diabetes, but there's people, all people around me, and I can tell you that is a very important crisis our country faces and we face. The bullying in schools, I've already talked to you about. Bullying anywhere is intolerable, but it could have been right here today. Eastern Oregon Border Economic Development. I want to make it very clear to my fellow Republicans because I've heard a few things. I will not negotiate. You get back here. You, d you use the walkout once too many for Peter Michael Coleman Courtney. No more. It was wrong the first time, it was wrong the second time, and it's wrong today. Not because I said it is. Check your oath of office. Check the Oregon Constitution. It, this, I don't, I'm not here as a Democrat. I'm here because I got the honor, like few others, to be one of just 30 people to take care of the needs of 4 million Oregonians. I've always said, I am not here just to care about my constituents, all constituents. I don't care who you are. I believe that. And I'm going to tell you, there's a few days left, but you better come back here because now my state has another monster on its hands. And I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you know what it is. There is another big issue. The legislature is going to have to get involved in that issue as the Washington legislature is involved in it. And I'm going to tell you, here we are. So I hope you let me understand that somewhere in here, uh, someone better take a close look at what it is to be a member of the Oregon legislature. If you do not want to go to committees and or legislative sessions, then don't run for the Oregon legislature. Oregon, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't shut down the government of Oregon. Please don't do it. So with that, I'm going to bring the gavel again to town and adjourn us until tomorrow. And I'm going to tell you, the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. The budgets are out now. Have you noticed that? Go check things that are being funded. Just go check them. 
Go understand the magnitude of the work that the co-chairs and the budget people have done for all inches, square yards of the state of Oregon. Go check it. Check the programs that are in it. Check them. All over Oregon. This isn't good for me, but I can tell you, Someone's going to have to explain to Peter Michael Coleman, Courtney, someday, how you can justify leaving your post. I don't understand. Someone, I know I've been told recently, you're outdated. Okay. But shutting down government is anarchy. I'm sorry, that is anarchy. Anarchy. Now, that's, not, that's pretty serious stuff. Healthy Kids and Farm, Farm Workers Act, pesticide, pesticide bill. Indian Child, where I, I just can't even look at this list anymore. I don't even want to look at another list of the bills that we're not going to fund. I don't want to see it. Don't show it to me, staff. I don't want to come up here again. Don't show me what we're not doing. I don't want to see it, and don't tell me. Don't tell me what's in the I don't want to know anymore, because all it does is create blood pressure issues, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to see it, because I don't know how to handle it. I don't know how to deal with this. So, Peter, adjourn till tomorrow. <sighs> Jesus, you know, I, I, I don't understand certain parts of human nature. If, since we don't have a quorum, uh, pursuant to Article 4, Section 12, I, you know, I, I have to say, here we are, I shut this session down per the Oregon Constitution. Don't you think that's a little ironic? Individuals are violating their oath of office. So here I am shutting the government down because individuals are violating the very document I have to read, uh, read from or the, the President Pro Tem has to read from every day. There's a bit of an irony there, is there not? To me there is. Pursuant to Article 4, Section 12 of the Oregon Constitution, and Senate Rule 3.01. Without objection, the Senate is adjourned without a quorum till tomorrow. 11 o'clock is, it's, it's Wednesday, March, 4th. March 4th. Go get your food. Please get your food. Please get your food. Food is ready. Everybody, food's ready.